Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at a rare Glen Farkless, the Glen Farkless 25, celebrating 100 auctions from 2011 to 2019. 51% ABV, exclusively matured in sherry cast, Dustin, first, second, and third fill only. Yep. 25 year old Glen Farkless, as you know. A whiskey distillery that is more missed than hit for me, personally. Yeah. Got a few family casts. I've had all the core range ones. Decent whiskeys, decent whiskeys. Um, if you were into 43% whiskey, uh, decently sherry. Um, but as far as, and good value for the money. I mean, there's no cheaper 25-year-old on the market than the standard 43% 25-year-old. My first 25-year-old whiskey. Nice Probably introduction. Nice introduction to older whiskeys. Uh, not something I'd buy today, but I took a chance on this um, 100th anniversary, or excuse me, 100th uh, anniversary of 100 auctions uh, from 2011 to 2019. Again, it comes in at a nice 51% ABV. It's got comes, a good color. Yeah, it comes in this nice clear bottle. And Dustin, let's tell the folks what we think of it. I did see on this, I was doing a little research before we reviewed this. Mm -hmm. I believe I read one of 900 bottles. So this is, yeah, you it's said very, super limited. So yeah, we're it, talking super. Yeah, it's it's very, very limited. Um, I did look up how many bottles of it were. It was a very small number, but yeah, that sounds about right. Under a thousand, something like that. And again, very nice clear bottle, which you don't always get with Glen Farkles, but you use it off the family casks. Yeah. Uh, normally they come, the core range comes in brown. So um, as you can see by the fill level, uh, I've drank this down quite a bit. I've probably had this eight or nine months, which means I've probably had it three weeks. I'm kidding. Actually, this is one he's actually had for <laughs> over a year, guys. Um, so he's while. actually the first time he's ever I told you the wrong direction. <laughs> I'm terrible about knowing when I got whiskeys. Yeah. Terrible about it. But it, it's been a while. It's been a while. And, um, you know, I used to really appreciate that kind of the zestiness of the old uh, Glen Farkless 25 before I dabbled into too many older sherry whiskeys. Yeah. I kind of lost my love for it. But this one's at a higher ABV. And we're going to tell you what we think. Dustin, again, nice color. Yeah. On this one. And uh, what do you think of those, my friend? So I'm getting a, some Oloroso, the kind of the standard Oloroso notes. I'm getting a really a chocolatey and a little bit of butterscotch, Mike, just a touch. And then I'm getting, um, it's an oak note here, and it's it's a little tired. I mean, they say first, second, and third fill, but... I didn't ever guess it. No, I mean, there there is an oak note here that just makes me think that one of these... There's six of the, ba the barrels used here were just ancient. I mean, like 15th fill. I mean. Yeah, you, I would never guess first, second, and third fill yeah. and, until I actually looked it up. But like, if you tell right. me there's one first fill in here and a bunch of like really tired casks, okay. Yeah, but uh, I'm definitely getting that um, butterscotch yeah. note that I get yeah. off a lot of yeah. Glen Farkless. I mean, it's pretty characteristic of like the first time I had the 17. Um, so I'm getting that butterscotch. butterscotch. I'm getting just a nice sherry sweetness. And you know, not a ton else. It's it's kind yeah, of yeah. two three dimensional. It's it's I sort get of a little bit of like a kind of a not even a, not even a cookie, but like a biscuit or something where it's kind of sweet but not really, and the malt. And you it, know, my guess, Mike, is those second and third fill casks. Mm -hmm. They spend a long time, time in, in the first, first and second fill. It I wasn't mean, a finishing, was it? No, no. It's like I, they, got, they got a bottle from the they got a cast from the seventeen year old and reused that and called it the second fill. I, I fully believe that's what happened here. It's like an engine that's been, um, you know, you, re you had to bore out the, the piston holes, you know what I mean? And you just called it a new engine again. Yeah, and I will say this. I mean, it is a little more aromatic than the standard 25. But it is. But it better be at 51%. Yeah, I don't get this big 51% near, you know, it doesn't cast strength. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm guessing it's not, but it's still a very, very high ABV, which I would assume would be close yeah. to cast strength. But I'm not getting the punchiness of a... 50 plus percent whiskey. And you know, I get more sherry on the standard 25s sometimes. Now, again, Glenn Farkless is famous for inconsistency oh, within boy. their one bottle is actually decent and one bottle is just terrible. And then you get that rare, like, whoa, hey, what, what happened here? If you ever get the 25 that is 4 2 2015 on the back of the bottling code, which is usually back right here, run. Run. That is a terrible bottling. Yeah, I need to find out the one I have because let me tell you. But that's not what we have here. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, we have, we have a good 51% there. Yes, uh, it, it does smell nice. It has, even though it's very basic and it's very clunky in its delivery, it's almost like watching uh, some somebody in a suit of armor running. Like, geez, man, you can be smooth. <laughs> you know, you're a little smoother than that. I mean, that is very clunky, very 
robotic, mechanical. Yeah, I don't think this is offensive, won't turn anybody off, but I am not getting any note here that makes me go, ooh, I can't wait to drink this. No, when I first, uh, maybe that's why I've had the bottle over here. When I first got the bottle, I was like, oh sweet, you know, almost a maybe cash strength or close to cash strength Highland yeah. or uh, Glen Farkless 25, let's get into it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it just smells like sherry and butterscotch. And yeah. it's not even super rich, it's just okay. I mean, it's kind of like the, honestly, it sounds, it's like Glen Farkless 17 turned up, which is odd because the 17 is not all sherry. But to me, this is like a higher proof 17. Yeah, I agree. The 17 is my favorite of the core range, as I've told I've yeah, you Yeah, I've said that, and you know what? Mm -hmm. I have a 17 that is completely polar opposite of yours, and I like them both uh, more than any other core range I've had. Yeah, I agree. Both of those are better than any core range. My 17 is from, has a bottling date of 2012. Yours is like 2017, I want to say. 18, maybe even. Like that. But yours has kind of got a lot more sherry going on. Mine's more bourbon, and both so, of them. So I guess work. what we're saying is whiskey used to be better? I don't know. Yeah. At, least with the, at least with the Glen Farkless 17. All right, so Dustin, uh, decent smell. Again, two-dimensional smell. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, pleasant, nice. You know, that was uh, not what I was expecting for a bottle that cost, you know, almost $200. I was expecting yeah. a little bit more. What are you picking up about? So, first thing I got to say is the ABV is really nice on here. Um, I'm getting some nice alcohol spark. It's creamy. It's got a good mouthfeel of viscosity. Um, and then I'm getting, getting a lot of the oak and, like, um, buttery, um, cookie, savory kind of oak stuff going on here. I'm getting the sherry. Um, everything here is, every note on here, Mike, is good. Every flavor that's on here, I think, is good. I don't know that any of them go together. Yeah, so that's what I kind of meant by a man running a suit of armor. Yeah. It's not that, you know, a gauntlet isn't nice. A helmet has its function. Yeah. Breastplate, if you know, take it on a sword. Yeah. It's going to be useful. Um, at least those parts go in a suit of armor. This is more like, a paintbrush and a you know a battle axe. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's just it feels disjointed, mismatched. Yeah. Um yeah. it's actually a little bit better than what, what my previous tastings of this has been. So, you know, having this bottle open for a better part of a year, it's helped it somewhat. Yeah. And I kinda of found that with Glenn Farkless's, the more time you give it with air, the better they become. Um I was actually I was expecting this to be um less of an experience than what I'm getting today. Yeah, no. I will say, I mean there's like, I was, there were a couple, I remember last time we had this, which I think was almost a year ago, Mike. Disappointing. And I remember, not just disappointing, but I remember just some off notes. Those are kind of gone, but mm -hmm. I I can't get it behind it. Like, the way the, the butterscotch and the sherry... Mixed together. Especially on the palate. On the nose, they were two separate notes. Yeah, I kind of like the nose better. Yeah, so when you drink them, or on the palate, um, they're mixed together, and it's almost like oil and water like they don't mix well at all um yeah almost borderline astringent you know to some degree and the malt is not helping here and it's classic Lynn Farkless malt so those people mm -hmm. who are big Lynn Farkless fans you might like I it I think you're gonna like that malty finish on here or I think or I'm struggling Mike is I just don't see well, let's look at it with water let's maybe let's give it the water test because maybe that's gonna get us somewhere else but it's yeah. just it's missing on a lot of notes you know what it is? It's like someone who showed up to a um, shooting competition mm -hmm. with a shotgun. Like, yeah, man, you're going to hit the target, you sloppy bastard. But, you know, this isn't really, this is a precision sport here. And you're just treating it like, you know, this is a backyard, you know, slugfest. Yeah. So Mike just went in with water. And I almost thought I was going to say it, it saved the day. It starts out beautifully sherry. Gorgeous up front. I was like, oh, it's so, wow, okay, we're good. And then the oak comes in, and the oak, there's something off about the oak on here. It's it's too sour. Not sour, it's, it's funky. Not even, it's, it's not even bitter, it's just... It's buttery still. It, yeah, it, it's almost like oak gone, oak left out in the sun too long or something like that. Very strange oak note to it. Yeah, it's like they tried drying it out after it got wet and they didn't quite finish. Mm -hmm. and, and then, they like, decided to change their mind, decided yeah. to transition. And then again, it's got that classic Glen Farkless malt that then comes in with the oak at the end. And again, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Glen Farkless oak malt. Tell me what you think their, tell me what you think their malt, what does their malt mean to you? Their malt is always this, um, it's, it's sort of savory, 
it's starting to bring in vanilla, but it doesn't quite get there. Mm -mm. It's oak. And I know, again, I'm, I mean, I actually think there's an oak level flavor in the malt itself. I almost feel like if I had a new make, Glen Farkless, I would think there is a weird oak on this thing. It's savory, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't complement sherry. As well as you, well as the way as you yeah. think it should, since Glen Farkless loves sherry casks. And again, we both just mentioned how much we prefer the 17 to the rest of the core. That one's one of the few that's not all sherry. I know. Yeah. I feel like they really should be more focused on bourbon casks with some of these because this is. Some of the family casts do focus on bourbon casks, which yeah. is nice. I mean, it is kind of all over the place. I've always like thought, when I thought Glen Farkless, I've always thought butterscotch. Yeah. And, I mean, and this we keep is a. Coming back to that. This is a butterscotch, but the sherry note with the butterscotch almost makes the butterscotch sickly. It's almost like a butterscotch that went evil. Yeah. Are you a Star Wars fan? I am a Star Wars fan, yeah. Yeah, you Star Wars in there too. So, you know, like, you know, if you ever watched like the Clone Wars or yeah. the prequels, like, you know, Anakin Skywalker was like a great Jedi. Yeah. You know, and then he was tainted, you know, he turns to evil. And it's almost like, but the butterscotch note is Anakin Skywalker. And then after he gets his limb, limbs cut off and he gets put in the suit, Yeah. that's what happens with the butterscotch. Yeah, I, I'll tell you what, Mike, cut off. I mean, I'm like... And I can't breathe. I'm trying to get past, because I do think with water, that really did sweeten up, gave me a nice sherry finish. It's better than I remember. Mm -hmm. Better, better but, than the past, yeah. But I, you know me, I, I look at richness, creaminess. Sure. Nailed it. Yeah. I look at finish. Not so much. No. And I look at nose, and I keep coming back to, there's something off. I like the nose much better before I added water. Like, it unleashed something that I wish I didn't unleash. You know, because yeah, yeah. again, at first I said with the nose um, neat, it was it was two dimensional. Yeah. I'll accept two dimensions. So think of it this way: what Other if I what if dimensions. I gave you a tootsie roll, but I put it in oak? Well, I'd say give me a Glen Farkless and let's see which one's better. Because I am like legitimately thinking oak to tootsie roll, and like maybe like a vanilla oak, like vanilla tootsie roll. It almost feels like. There's something about Glenn Farkless that they didn't progress towards a last step with some of these specialty bottlings. Yeah. Because again, it, it's, a, it's a nice drinker for the ones that are the base core ranges that are, you know, the regular ones. I like the 105, you yeah. know, for a nice little sherry punch. But yeah, you know, this one here is uh, kind of a, a mismatch. Um, not definitely my favorite Glenn Farkless I've ever had. And I'm not really high on that distillery to begin with. Dustin, if you had to score this one, where would you be? Yeah, so I came in thinking we were going to be in the mid-80s, Mike, and I was hoping we'd be in the mid-80s. I think I'm going to stay there, and I think I'm going to go 86. Yeah, I'm right there with you, 86. Yeah. I, 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 I assumed less. I really did. I, I, was, I told you when we started. I was thinking 85, and we'll see if it goes up or down. Yeah. And I'm pleasantly surprised. I think the water helped more than I expected. Sure. And I think that saved the day because I would have probably gone 84 on the initial taste. Yeah, it was a bit clunky, neat. A yeah. bit clunky. Um, usually the family cast does a pretty good good job of delivering your cast strength, Glenn Farkless. And, you know, I, you know, most of the core range is 43% ABV over the 105, which I am not a huge fan of, or at least it's 43% here in the States. So I was really pumped to get, you know, 51%. I thought, you know, it would just be dialed up. It's not really dialed up. It's kind of gone in a different direction, kind of similar to Lagavulin. Yeah. You know, when you get capturing Lagavulin's, you think, oh, it's a 16 on steroids. It's really not the 25 on steroids. It's taken it to a different direction, which may be your taste. It's just not mine. Um, yeah. Again, I'm an 86 out of 100, and I'm probably slightly generous on that note. I'm probably more of an 85 on this. Definitely not a bottle I'd buy again. Definitely a whiskey disappointment. Yeah, I mean, what would you pay for this? Like, if you were... It's like 180 bucks is what I did pay for. What I, what, what I pay for yeah. if I want to buy it again? <clears throat> well, Dustin, I'm, I'm, you know, in that... Forty fifty dollar range, which I wouldn't even bother with. So this yeah. will be my last bottle. Of this will ever buy. I don't think I could even consider more than sixty for this bottle, and that's that's sad. Yeah, I have twenty five years, fifty one percent, first and second fill, first, second, and third fill. Old Rosso yeah. Sherry Cast. It should be better. I know bottles that you're not excited about, but like some of those Glen Morangi Special Editions mm -hmm. that they put out every year, mm -hmm. they're sweet. They get to the point and they do their job. And those are about a hundred bucks, and we are lucky enough in Ohio where we constantly see those going for about sixty bucks mm -hmm. uh, when they last call. That's where I'm at on this one, and I would rather buy the Glen Ranji. Yeah, though this is this feels like a poorly thought out plan. Yeah, They're like we're gonna throw something together. Let's just full first, second, third fill, and I'm sure it'll be fine. That's what someone said. Yeah, and it wasn't fine. It could have been so much better. Anyway, yep. those are our thoughts. If you've uh, 
been one of the people, I would say fortunate, I don't know if I use the word fortunate, if you were one of the few people that yes. were able to try this bottle, let me know what you think, maybe I'm off. Again, this isn't my favorite distillery, but uh, I do like to bring you Glen, uh, reviews from Glen Farkas. I've been the 17, the 21, the 25. I have a couple of um, family cast bottlings I'll be bringing you soon, did the 22, and now this 25, and I'd get to be stunned Yeah. from this distillery. That's where I'm, that's where I'm at. Anyway, they can't all be winners. People yep. make mistakes. I made a mistake. It's 200 bucks. Tragic. Could have spent it on whatever. Yeah, put it towards a better bottle. Could have towards a better bottle. Anyway, until next time, we want to thank you for once again joining for another Whiskey Review. And Justin, we wish the folks happier drinking. Happier than this for sure. Yeah. In the comment section. Next time. <laughs>